Whenever I show the human story to anyone, the first reaction I often get is, oh, I really like the colors. And since I've recently been working on the color schemes again, I thought, why not share how I go about creating color schemes for the game? Within the game, you as the player are able to explore miniature planets that depict different cultures throughout different ages in history. And even though I want the game to be historically authentic, the art is clearly stylized. And so is my use of color. From the old stone age up until modern times, each age has its own unique set of colors. And you can see here in my level selection menu that the main color that I picked for each age moves along the color wheel. Now I could leave it at that and go for a monochromatic color scheme, but I wanted to bring more variance and life to the screen, so I chose to add two more colors to each level. The chosen colors form a triangle on the color wheel. The shape of that triangle differs a little from age to age. Levels with a triadic color scheme tend to have a bit of a softer look, whereas levels with a split complementary color scheme have more contrast. To test out these colors, I go into Unity to block out my levels with proxy assets like cubes and spheres. This is important because I have to see the colors in relation to each other to determine if the hue, saturation and value of my colors work well together. Just in case you're not familiar with these terms, roughly speaking, hue is the actual color, value determines how light or dark the color is, and saturation determines how dull or vibrant the color is. The impact that a color scheme creates is highly dependent on how much space each color is taking up on screen. Therefore I apply my chosen colors to the sky, the planet, and some differently sized objects on the planet to see how that ratio looks and feels like. While I apply color, I also continuously double check a grayscale version of the image in Photoshop. Because this way, I can pay special attention to the values of my image. It is harder to clearly see the values of an image when it is colored, and it is important for readability to get the values right. So I think it's worth it to go through that extra step. Because the rules for color are so highly situational, let me give you some examples of how I apply them to my levels. Generally, I want to have a good amount of contrast between the sky and the planet to separate those elements and make them easily readable. In the new Stone Age level, the sky and the planet have complementary colors, which makes for a clear and easy contrast. Blue hues tend to be darker in value by default, and yellow hues are brighter in value, so that adds to the contrast. In the post-classical level though, both the sky and the planet are purple. So to create that separation, I increased the brightness of the sky by a lot. These are the colors I started out with for the industrial age. And only when I checked the values in Photoshop, I realized that even though the colors form a nice contrast, the values tell a different story. It is not easy for my eyes to separate the planet from the sky, because they almost have the same value. Similarly, it is hard to understand the planet as one coherent element, because the values within it differ so much. So I chose to brighten the sky and at the same time make the planet a little bit darker. That instantly made it easier to look at, even though the hues stayed the same. I also want my levels to be vibrant. But it is by far not as simple as cranking up the saturation on everything, because that quickly becomes too much. Every color is screaming for attention, and it is tiring to look at. In the Bronze Age levels, I barely have any value between the sky and the planet, but because both the pink and the yellow are fairly saturated, and therefore loud enough to compete, they still make for a very clear separation. I lowered the saturation of the pink a little though, because when a color takes up a lot of space on the screen, it is already very loud. This way, the yellows and the blues pop out really nicely in contrast. The classical age was a challenge as well. I wanted the main colors to be red and yellow. Both are signal colors. So when they both took up a lot of space on screen, it quickly was too much to look at. Lowering the saturation for the sky worked rather well to reduce some noise. But reducing saturation for the reds of the planet quickly made it look too dull. I wanted the reds to pop but I couldn't make them any brighter either. So what I did instead to reduce contrast is shifting the red hue of the planet more towards orange, a color closer to yellow on the color wheel. 
This way I could keep the color saturated, but still reduce some noise and some contrast. And then I reintroduce some more saturated reds on objects that don't take up as much space on screen. Lastly, the purples make for a nice color variation. And because purple is in itself a hue that has a darker value, I brighten it by quite a bit to bring it closer to the values of the reds and oranges. Of course I don't want the levels to be cubes forever, but now I already know which colors to use when I create more objects for those miniature worlds. In the end, I want to make players feel uplifted when they look at the levels. And even though I know I will probably keep on tweaking the colors, I can see that it already works for me. These colors draw me in and make me want to keep on creating these little worlds. So I hope I can pass on a little bit of joy to others this way too. For future videos, I want to cover specific aspects of the development process. So if you're curious about any specific topics, let me know in the comments and I will probably pick it up. If you want to get notified when the game is out, you can wishlist the game on Steam. Link is in the description below. All right, thank you for watching and I hope you have a good day. See you next time. Bye.